Here now, Sean Spicer, former White House press secretary and senior advisor to America First Action, and Juan Williams, Fox News political analyst and co-host of The Five. Gentlemen, thank you very much for being here. Good to be here. Uh, I, I want to start with this soundbite from Nancy Pelosi on Face the Nation. Watch this. The president could come right before the committee and talk, speak all the truth that he wants if he wants, you don't to, expect him if to, he wants to take the oath of office, or he could do it in writing. Sean, should he do that? I don't know. I mean, that's up to him to decide. He, he clearly had no problem doing it with Mueller. He's been his best communications director and press secretary since he took office. So I don't think that there's a reason that he wouldn't do it. But at the end of the day, I think part of this comes back to, I, I think we've lost sight of, of, of a big piece of this, which is all of this really stemmed from whether or not Hunter Biden was qualified to be getting the money that he was getting for a job that he wasn't qualified for and what did or did not happen in Ukraine, uh, whether or not there was a cover-up, what happened, what the attorney general at the time in Ukraine did, what pressure or didn't did the current administration put on them to make changes at the attorney general's office. We've lost sight of the underlying act here. And that's what's kind of gotten lost. And so Pelosi and others have done a really good job of shifting this into uh, this political battle over whether the president should be impeached, whether you like him or not, whether we should undo the last election or not. And we have lost sight of what started this in the first place, which is whether or not there was wrongdoing in the first place, whether or not Hunter Biden was qualified to get $50,000 a month. And if he was, what was he doing in return for that? So, uh, all right, Juan, I, you wrote a piece on this um, about why the president brought up Joe Biden, why you believe he did. Why? I think he's afraid of Joe Biden. I think polls show consistently that Biden is the most uh, powerful candidate, powerful Democrat that he could face in 2020. I think the Real Clear Politics average has him defeating President Trump by 10 points. I think in the key swing states, no Democrat performs as well against President Trump as Joe Biden. And I don't think we're talking about impeaching either Joe Biden or Hunter Biden. We're talking about impeaching President Trump. And that's why this is about President Trump's actions. Yet last week at the hearings, when one congressman said, if you want to get to the bottom of this, uh, and the man who started it, well, President Trump can come right up yeah, here and But I think that the reason testify. that it was brought up is because... If, was it legitimate to raise that question on the phone call? That's the question that needs to be answered. Well, in other words, what is the president's intent and motivation by raising it on the phone call? Is That's it right. because he thinks that it's looped into this larger question of corruption in Ukraine? Or is it just that, as you say, Juan, he's a little nervous about what he sees in the polls and wants some dirt? Sean? Well, I think, look, this is a guy, if he really was concerned about that, I don't think he does it on a phone call with 80 people listening in. I mean, I think the, the president's a lot smarter than that. He's played hardball in New York real estate market for years. Mm -hmm. I think if he really was worried about this, he has a lot easier ways of going about it than doing it on a phone call with half the national security staff listening in. He knows that they're listening in. If he, thinks that, if he thought that there was something wrong or nefarious with his conversation, he wouldn't have done it with a bunch of people I think people it's pretty clear that he doesn't think there was, was anything wrong with the conversation. He's made that pretty That's clear. Right. But now now the American people are going to, you know, watch all this and decide. It, look, look at this ABC uh, Ipsos poll. Seventy percent of Americans say that Trump's Ukraine actions were wrong. Uh, then you go to how many support impeachment and uh, and uh, removal. That number is at 51 percent right, right now, Juan. Yeah. So and what was really incredible about this ABC poll, Martha, was when they asked people, are you paying attention? It was only like 21 percent who are paying attention right now. So there are two ways to look what at this. That tell you? Yeah, one way is to look at it and say people really are not engaged in this. But the other way to look at it is to say as people become engaged, guess what? They're going to have more information and they're not going to simply say, I don't know who's telling the truth and this is all politics. No, but they're going to Among... go on their gut. They're going to watch all this and they're right. going to go on their gut. But on the 21 percent who are paying attention, it's like two thirds, 60 something right. percent say, oh, yeah, President Trump is guilty Can here. I... Uh, put, put up the other number. This is a Des Moines, to, to, Iowa poll, and then I'll, I'll, I would love uh, for you to respond to this. Um, Trump's approval rating in Iowa among Republicans, 85 percent, and that number is increasing over the course of this. Go ahead, Sean. Well, that's right. I mean, but, but like, if I could just go back to this ABC poll, because I think there yeah. are two points that, that need to get made on this. Number one, it was 506 adults 
not registered voters, not likely voters, adults. Uh, that is not exactly a sound methodology when you do this. And number two is, I got to be honest, if I listen to uh, a lot of the media these days, the way they characterize what's been going on, I'd probably agree with a lot of that polling. The problem is right now, if you listen to a lot of the other networks and the mainstream legacy media, you don't get the full story. You hear one side and it all comes out bad. There is no question. This isn't just about the Democrats. I think the media has made its bed that this is their opportunity yes. to join forces with the Democrats wow. in a way that they haven't before to oust this president. So I, I actually think that, that if you watch anything but Fox and a couple other outlets, you're going to hear a very one-sided view as to what's been going on. That's why we have Juan Williams and Sean Spicer, because on this show, we're going to tell you both sides of what is being said out there so that people can watch all this and they can make up their own mind. We're selfishly glad that you failed finally in Dancing with the Stars so that we get you back on a Oh, I thought he was great. <laughs> I really liked it. I don't mean fail. Thank that was a bit Juan. of a harsh word. No, I, you didn't fail. You didn't fail. You, you did very well, no, but you eventually, look, now you're here, and it's yeah. Monday night. That's all I'm going to say. Um, so we're I, glad I about do. I, I'm dancing around questions again. That shirt's going to follow you for the rest of your life. Yeah, I, was, I was giving you credit, Sean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Juan. The attire's a lot more... I, I enjoy the attire yeah, a lot more. Feel free to wear the green <laughs> shirt here anytime. All right, guys, I got to go. Thank you both very good, much for being here. Good Coming night. up next, Attorney General.